Today you're going to learn about something called Flexbox, which is a new way for us to create layouts inside our websites. Now, for the past many years, we've been using something called Float inside CSS in order to take elements inside our website and place them next to each other. Now, Float was never really intended to be something that was supposed to be used that way, but because it worked, we've been using it for so many years now. So luckily today, we have a couple of new methods we can actually use in order to create layouts inside websites, one being CSS Grid and another one being Flexbox. Now, there's a difference between CSS Grid and Flexbox, one being that CSS Grid has a couple more features when it comes to responsive design, uh, and Flexbox is more available inside the different browsers. So we can actually go ahead and check this out inside this website here that's called caniuse.com. I can go ahead and say CSS Grid, and as you can see, there is some browsers that doesn't quite support CSS Grid yet. If we were to type in Flexbox, then you can see we have a lot more green inside this diagram here, meaning that we can use it inside more browsers than we can with CSS Grid. Now, there is, of course, a difference in using CSS Grid and Flexbox other than the responsiveness that you might get out of it from CSS Grid. Uh, one being that CSS Grid seems to be more focused on the entire layout of the entire document, whereas Flexbox is more about rearranging the sub items inside sections of a website. OK, so if we were to go back inside my document, here, you can actually see that right now we have a style sheet uh, that has some default styling inside of it that simply gets rid of margins and paddings inside the website. So it just gets rid of sort of these annoying margins that we have inside uh, the browsers as a default. Now, we also have a class called container where I set a width to 100%, meaning the full width of the browser, and a height to 500 pixels, and then a background color so we could actually see it inside the website. Inside my index page, I have a section inside my body tag. And again, you might say that I'm using too many div boxes in this example here. Again, I'm just using the div boxes here to show you how we can actually use Flexbox. So don't worry too much about the fact that I could have set up the, the HTML tags in a better way. It's just so I can better show this example here, okay? Now, I have a section tag that I gave the class container, which is going to be the one I styled. And inside the section, I have a couple of div boxes. Well, I have quite a few div boxes that all have a class set to item. And inside each div box, I have a paragraph that has some placeholder text inside of it. Now, inside the browser, if we were to take a look at it, you can see that we have the text up here, which is quite small because I haven't styled it. And we have the big gray background of this container that is the section inside my code. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to take my elements and in the same way as we used to do with float, I would like to put them next to each other instead and inside some kind of container so we can have maybe something that simulates a gallery or some links inside a front page or something. And we can do that using Flexbox. So if I were to go inside my text document here again and go inside my style sheet, I'm gonna go ahead and create some styling for the container. Now, if you want to make the container section here into a flex box, then we're going to go ahead and give it a display set to flex, which then tells it that we're going to have some items inside this container that we want to rearrange in a certain way. Another thing we need to add when it comes to a flex box is we need to tell it if it should wrap the content onto multiple lines. So if we were to have a bunch of text inside uh, this website here that goes, you know, in all the different boxes that goes horizontally, if there's no more room horizontally, then it should jump down to the next line. And this is something that Float actually does as a default. But inside Flexbox, we do actually need to tell it to wrap to the next line, which Again, you might see, well, why shouldn't we just do that as a default? But in some cases, it might be nice to actually be able to choose if you want to have this effect going inside the website. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go and say we have a flex dash, and then you can see we get some options inside my editor here. The one we're looking for is the one called wrap. Now, as a default, it's going to be set to no wrap, meaning that it's not gonna jump to the next line. Uh, we can also choose wrap if we want to. We can also choose wrap reverse, which means that it's going to do a reverse wrap where if there's no more space inside the horizontal line, then instead of jumping below to next line, it's gonna jump above instead. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and choose wrap because this is what we want as a default. Then the next one we want to create here is something called flex dash direction. And as a default, this one is gonna be set to row, which means that we're just gonna go ahead and go from left to right in one row, which is also what we have typically inside uh, CSS when we use float. 
So if you want to get the same effect as just using float, then we can go and choose row. If you wanted to go from the right side to left side, then we can choose row reverse. If you wanted to go from top to bottom, you can choose column. And if you wanted to go opposite from bottom to top, you can choose column reverse. So there's quite a few options here. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with row. Now we set a couple of different parameters inside the container here. And what we could actually do, because at least in my case, I think I'm gonna be using these two every time I'm going to be using flex. Um, we can actually go ahead and write one line of code that will actually do both of these inside one line, which makes it a lot faster. So just to show you guys, if we were to go down to the next line here and say flex dash flow, then we can actually go ahead and say, first of all, we want to have it in a row. And then afterwards, we want it to wrap. So we have both of these parameters inside one line. So we can actually go ahead and do that instead if we want to. So I'm just gonna delete the other two. So now let's actually go ahead and take a look at what it does inside the website here. So if we were to go back and refresh, you can see that all the lines of text, even though it can be a bit difficult because there's no spacing between them, are going in one line all the way across. And now because there's no more room on the right side over here, it jumps down to the next line. Another thing you're also gonna notice is that it does actually spread out with the height in order to adjust the content to have even space inside the container here. And this is also something we can change later on if you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to that in a few minutes. So the next thing we want to do is inside our style sheet here, we can go ahead and set something called justify content, which means that we can actually decide how much space should be in between horizontally between the items we have inside the container. So if we were to go inside the container class here, go below, we can say justify content. And here we can set it to a bunch of things. We can set it to center, flex end, flex start, space around, space between, which might not make a lot of sense now. So let me actually go ahead and show it. If I were to choose center and save it, refresh the browser, you can see that all these elements inside our container are actually gonna get centered inside the website because we have an even amount of space on the right side and the left side. And as you can see at the bottom, text that couldn't fit on the first line also gets centered inside the website. So we can actually choose how we want to position the elements horizontally inside the website. But again, as you can see, using center does not create space in between the items here. So if I were to go back inside my code, I can go and choose something else besides center. If I were to say space around, save it, go back inside my browser, you can then see we get space around the content inside our elements here. So now we do actually have a bit of spacing. What you will notice though, is that we do also have some spacing on the left and the right side. So we have an even amount of spacing on the left and right side of each item, meaning that the items that are furthest to the left are gonna have half the spacing as in between the items. And the one on the right side is also gonna have half the spacing. So if you want to fix this, we can actually go back inside our CSS code. And instead of saying space around, we can actually go ahead and say space between. So we to go inside my website, refresh. You can now see that we don't have any space on the edges of each item, but we do have in between the items, which is something that might be a little bit more realistic to what you want to do inside your website. The last two we also have here is something called flex end and flex start. So we were to say flex end, refresh the browser. What you'll notice is that all the content gets pushed to the right side of the browser and flex start is what we have in here as a default when we don't set this parameter inside the CSS code, which is just going to make it do the same thing as here, but from the, the start over here. Okay, so this is what we had before we started changing anything using justify content. Now I did notice that there's one parameter that didn't pop up inside my text editor here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show it manually, uh, which is one called space dash evenly. If I go ahead and save this one, go inside the browser, we can actually see that we have space evenly, not just in between the elements, but also around on the edges here of the, the outside elements. Okay, so just so you know, we also have these. And as you can see, the bottom content here actually looks quite nice when we do it in this way. So just know that there's also that option, even though my text editor here doesn't say you can use it. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and change it back to space between because I think this is the better one to just use here in this example today. Just gonna refresh and there we go. Now, when it comes to the container here, there's two more things I want to talk about. One is called align-items. 
And the other one is align dash content. Now align dash items decides how the individual items are going to be uh, positioned inside the line that it's inside of. Whereas align dash content is going to take all the rows that we have inside our website and position them vertically inside the browser. Now, as you can see, we have a couple of different options here. If I were to just choose one like flex start, this is actually the default one where if I were to go back inside the browser, you can see that nothing happens. If I were to change this one to flex and go back and refresh, you'll notice that all the content goes to the bottom of the, the line that it's actually inside of. So we can actually split up the content into two lines because we have content going down to the next line. And as you can see, it all goes down to the bottom of that specific line. If we were to go back inside the code again and choose something called center, then again, the content gets centered inside the horizontal lines. Now for the next example, which is the one called stretch, I'm just going to go ahead and right click and show you guys how it actually looks like if we were to inspect the items inside the browser here because if we were to right click you'll actually notice that the div box which is the item that we're actually messing around with right now is only the amount of height that the content is inside of the container so because the text is only this amount of height here the item is also going to be the same size as the content now if i were to go back inside my code and write stretch then refresh the browser, you'll notice that we have something similar to the default styling. But if I were to right click on the element and inspect it, and then choose the div box, you'll actually notice that the item has a height that goes all the way down to the bottom of the horizontal line that's inside of. And again, we have three lines of content now because we have an inspector over here that sort of pushes the content together. So we of course have three lines now, so don't get confused by that. But just know that the item is going to take up the entire height of the line that is inside of when we use stretch. Now we also have something called baseline, which essentially goes in and see, okay, do we have any items that has more content vertically going downwards than the other items? And then it's going to go ahead and take all the items and center them inside the horizontal line. But it's also going to go ahead and take that one item that had more space going vertically and center the content to match up with the rest of the content inside that line. In this example here, we can't really show it because I don't have more space in some items than others, but that's what it can do. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and choose something default like flex start, which is the default one. And we're going to go ahead and talk about the last one, which is align dash content. Now, here we can go and choose something similar to the previous one. We can censor the content. Let's actually go ahead and again, the flex start is going to be the default one. Let's go ahead and center it. Refresh the browser. And what you'll notice that instead of taking up the entire space of the container, all the items are going to get pushed together and centered inside the browser because now we're not talking about the individual items. Instead, we're changing the styling of the entire row inside the container. Okay, so we were to go back inside the code and choose something other than center. If we were to choose something like space around, go back inside the browser, refresh, you'll notice that we have the same amount of space on the top and bottom of each item inside that row going all the way down to the other rows as well. If we were to go back inside the code again, and instead of choosing space around, we can go ahead and say space between. And again, you're starting to see some similarities here between this specific styling and some of the ones we used previously. So space between, again, is not going to leave any space on the top and bottom of these items here. So you'll notice that a lot of these stylings here are very similar to when we used justify content which was the one that decided horizontally how these items were going to be placed. And then align content is going to go and choose how they're going to be positioned vertically instead. Okay. So now we talked a bit about how we could style the container in order to position the items inside the container, but we can also do some styling to the individual items that we have inside the container. So if we were to go down to next line and create a class called item, which is the same class I have applied to all the items inside my index page. As you can see, we have a bunch of div boxes with text inside of it. And all of these div boxes has a class called item. So we're to go back inside my style sheet. The first one we're going to talk about is one called order, which is going to decide the order of how we want to show the items inside the browser. So if we were to go ahead and give all the items a order as one, of course, they're all going to be in the default order as we have them inside the index page because they have the same number. But if I were to go ahead and create a second class here and call it item two, 
and set the order to two, I could then go inside my index page and take one of the items that is maybe uh, the second last one we have down here. I'm gonna change the text so we can actually see which one it is to here or something. I'm going to change the class to item two, save it, go inside my browser, and then what you'll see is that we get the item at the bottom here instead. So because we ordered all the other elements as order number one, they're gonna be shown first inside the browser. And then because this specific item had order number two, then it's gonna come after all the other elements we have inside our HTML page. So as you can see, it's going to be shown last inside the website, okay? Now the next one I want to show you is something called flex, grow, shrink, and bases. And this is one that I know you will be using when you create Flexbox because this one essentially decides how much space each of these items are gonna take up when it comes to the width. So we're basically setting the width of each item here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna take the same example as previously with the order. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and change one thing, which is I'm going to replace the here text with the previous text that I had. So all of them have the same text inside of them, like so. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back inside my style sheet and I'm just gonna go ahead and replace order because we don't really need in this example here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write flex dash grow. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this one to one. Then I'm gonna do the same thing to item two down here. So I'm gonna say flex dash grow and set this one to two. Now I'm also gonna go ahead and give these a background color because we need to actually see what is going on here. So if it was a background color, it's going to be red on all the default ones. And then item two is going to have a background color set to green. Just so we can see what's actually going on here. So it was a refresh. And what you're going to notice here is that we have the one item that has a background color set to green that has more space available to it on the right side of it than all the other boxes. And this is because right now, if we were to take the, the top two examples here, we have a certain amount of space available horizontally based on the width of the content inside the items. So we essentially have this amount of spacing plus this amount of spacing over here available total in the horizontal line up here. And then the space is going to be divided evenly between these two items here. Now down here at the bottom, because we set the green one to grow twice as much, then the amount of space available, you can actually see that we have twice as much space inside the green item than we have next to the red item. So it's going to take up more space than the other items because it has grow set to two. Now we do also have one called flex dash shrink, which does the exact opposite of grow. It's going to go ahead and add more spacing to all the other elements instead of this specific item that has shrink inside of it. So it does the exact opposite of grow. Now we also have one called bases, and this is the one I really want to focus on because bases is going to tell us how much space each of these items are gonna take up as a default. So if we were to say we have something called flex dash bases, and I want to set it to, let's say 30%, because now we can actually start using pixels or percent or whatever measurement you might want to use. And if we were to do this, and also go ahead and copy paste this below here. So now we still have item number two, which instead are gonna take up 60%. Then if I were to go back inside my browser, refresh, what you're going to notice here is that all these items here are gonna take up 30% of the width they're inside of horizontally, and this one item is gonna take up 60% of the width. So the one called flex spaces is the one we really want to focus on if we want to give these items a specific width. As you can see, we do actually have the text jumping down to the next line, which is what we want to have inside a lot of website design examples, because it just looks a lot better if we have text going down to multiple lines if we can't fit them inside the container. And I just want to mention here as well that the basis styling is just a default styling is going to have for the width of these items. If we were to shrink the browser and there's no more space available, then if we also have a shrink or grow set inside our styling here, it's going to go ahead and take these and start adding these as well. So we can use grow, shrink, and basis all together in order to create a unique layout that switches around the size of the content depending on the width of the browser, okay? So another way we could actually write this, if you don't want to write both shrink, grow, and bases in three different lines, is we can actually go ahead and write just flex. And then say we want to grow zero, we want to shrink one, and we want to set the width to maybe 100 pixels. This will be the same thing as using grow, shrink, and bases all together inside one line, okay? 
So this is how we can use Flexbox in order to move around the content and align them horizontally instead of using floats. And this is a much better solution than using float because it allows for better customization that we used to have access to. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and create a gallery together using Flexbox. So you can actually see how we're going to use Flexbox inside a real website. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. I'd like to say thank you to all the people supporting me on Patreon. If you're interested in extra benefits such as lesson materials, then go ahead and visit the link that you see on screen here. And I'll see you guys next time.